everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video I just wanted to share some tips or actually how I went about buying my car because there's a lot of things that I thought I knew and things that I thought I was prepared for and yeah guys no <laughs> I wasn't so let's just get right into it I bought my car uh, is she is an Opal Adam and she's actually she looks like this but mine's just a red one and for me this was my dream car I just knew I wanted an Opal Adam and in my head nothing was going to stop me from getting it. Like I tried looking at the other cars but in my heart I knew. It's kind of like an Opal Adam or nothing. And also what went into my decision to actually buy it was just mostly just the thing of if I have to drive a car for the next five years, I think I'd want it to be a dream car. But let's just bear in mind that my dream car, well my dream car, it happened to be small. And it wasn't like, oh I want a G-Wagon, let me go get a G-Wagon. Because guys, cars are expensive. But, uh, so let's just get into around that. So when it time came for me to actually look for a car, what prompted my decision was I always knew that I needed a car for this first year of working. And then I needed to start looking. So the two, the first option or the first choice that you need to make is do I want it first hand or, do I, or can I get it second hand? Okay. The only reason why I went for first hand and not for second hand was purely because, yes, I had my mind set on the Opal Adam. But when I went to, I couldn't find many that were second hand. And when I found one, um, it was past 50,000. It was, no, I think it was under 50,000 kilometers. It just didn't have a service plan. So a service plan is nice because let's say I go and spend all this money buying the car. Then at least for the next two years, I know I can get servicing for free. Or even if it was just a year. Problem is with the car that I found, they had no service plan. So it means, yes, I must go and spend all this money and then... I still need to go and pay for servicing and servicing is quite important so I wasn't willing to do that part of it also is just because I don't like risk so there was no way I was just gonna take on this additional risk of what if there's something wrong with the car because it's I think it's the concept of foot stoots whereby what you see is what you get and any problems that you get like get afterwards is your own issue and because I'm not a fan of risk I wasn't willing to take that on um, for the second hand car so that's why I opted for first hand and before even deciding on this Opal Adam, because I wanted it, but my parents weren't sold on it at all. So my brother went and bought this car magazine. Okay, this is just the issue that was out when I was looking. And this car magazine is actually quite helpful because you can compare all the different cars, right? You compare all the different cars. It gives you details about the price, about the premium that you can expect. And it even says the good, the bad, and which one they would choose out of that range. So, for example, if I look at the Opal Adam, it says that, okay, it looks stylish. It's just the bad is that it has a tiny luggage compartment. And I won't lie, that boot is small. But, you know, compromise. And then, yeah, you basically look at the price that you're willing to pay and can you actually afford it or not. So, based on that, you can actually properly evaluate, okay, which cars are for me. And it was only when I did this that I realized that cars are expensive. It's like, it's not a joke. Anyways, so yeah, so that's how you can actually go about firstly identifying a car. If you don't have like a specific car that you want, you just need like a startup car. Then for me, this is the best way to go. You can compare. Um, the next thing is when it actually comes to buying the car, mine is being financed. I didn't buy it cash. I, I don't have that money. And I'm fortunate enough to get the opportunity to be financed in my name. Um, but... People say there's something like you can try and negotiate an interest rate or something. I'm not sure about that. That wasn't the really... I can't I can't be getting financing and then saying no, reduce my interest rate. Although I don't know how it works. I just... I was scared. <laughs> Maybe it's for my next future purchase. Then I can look at that. But for now, that's just... Yeah. So whatever they, they were willing to finance me and then I could buy the car. Um, someone came up to me and said, apparently you saved for your car. And I don't actually know why people are hearing this. Um, but one thing that I thought I was doing right was I did try to save for a car. So I did private tutoring and tutoring for my university. And I managed to save like 10,000 Rand. And I thought that's a lot of money. I mean, in my head, going from nothing to having like 10K is a lot. But then when it came to the car and trying to put that down as a deposit, it only actually reduced my interest, my payments, my actual premiums by, I think it was at least 200 Rand. So for me, that's really, it didn't seem, it didn't make a lot of sense. It didn't seem material to the entire amount, just a 200 rand difference. So to me, it was like, 
rather save your money for something else maybe save it for a rainy day and just pay the premiums at it as it is what is 200 rand per month and at that time it was a good thing to do because i thought it is just my cost premium and then i'm sorted insurance oh, insurance guys so let's deal with the insurance so as part of a, a financing arrangement is that you can't get a, you can't buy a car without insurance which makes sense just in case or not in case no yeah it is in case just in case you get into an accident or anything happens you can just make use of your insurance to cover it okay now when it comes to insurance i was just like okay my parents are on, are on our insurance let me contact our insurance and take whatever they get i called them and unfortunately the price that they were giving me wasn't something that i was willing to pay and for me i think the best approach is not is is for me i was looking for yes I, I need a service but also i need a service at a decent price so i actually went on to hippo to go and uh just fill in all my details and actually compare quotes of insurance so that i can obviously pay the cheapest price um one thing that you should know is because irrespective of how long you've had your license if you're under the age of 25 they do charge you higher than than all the people for insurance because you're still young so it's, it feels like it's discriminatory but i think we're also just high risk which makes sense i'm a 22 year old so that does factor in into the insurance price but just make sure that you actually compare quotes and don't just take the first one that someone gives you another thing is they ask about the the excess so excess is something that you have to pay for example i get in an accident today i have to pay over a certain amount before the insurance can actually do something um to actually assist me so for, sometimes they can give you a nice insurance of like let's say it's a, let's assume it's a thousand rand then you find that your excess is like 15 20 thousand rand these are all examples um but it's a bit ridiculous to think okay i must have fifteen thousand before you guys can actually fix my car and for me that excess is something that you should be able to have on hand so just when you're negotiating or trying to get insurance make sure you're considering the excess that you need to pay and just ask more about this excess and make sure that it's something that you know you're comfortable with paying but also another thing is if you have a high excess it reduces your premium but rather get a decent excess and get a decent premium as well so it's just a tough balance that you have to do and then just choose an insurance company and you're good to go apart from that i thought that's where it ends premium for the car and insurance it doesn't end there then you need my insurer or oh, was it the insurer my insurer needed to know about what tracking device I'm going to use. So now they gave me a whole pamphlet. This one, this one is just for tracker. There's tracker. There's all, all tech netstar. There's, I think there's three different ones that you could use. Basically so that you put a tracking device in your car in case of anything. That was for me is quite important to get so that you can always know where your vehicle is at all times. And then there, there's also different policies offering different products. And it's literally based to your needs. Do you want a panic, um, a panic alarm do you want to know where your car is all the time you want to know that that obviously tends to be more expensive and then i said okay premium insurance tracker that's it no they told me that and i actually have the prices here they told me that do i want to fit in uh, smash and grab on my window so that if someone tries to hijack me the glass stays in a, in a film on the window and it doesn't come and shatter on my face for me i thought smash and grab was the one that I needed, and they told me it would be 2200 Okay, wait for it. Then they told me, how about you get uh, something for small dents and scratches, so that you don't always need to go to your insurer to claim, but for example, if you just, for example, just scrape the side of a pole, all I have to do is take it to my, to the dealership, and then they pay for it. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. If I wanted it for five years, it would have been 4400 If I wanted it for two years, it was 2800 upfront guys then there was another one for your tires so if something happens to your tires bring it to the dealership and they sort you out 4200 i was like for all these three small uh, smash and grab dents and tires i needed at least 10,000 rand to do it upfront and i think when you're deciding on what extras to get use your own discretion but for me i i just felt like I need to make a trade-off for me smash and grab is important so that's the one that i'll get i don't i didn't think that dents and scratches is something that i needed and retires i just i felt like the likelihood of that just it just wasn't real so as much as yes you want to put down a deposit for your vehicle there's also additional stuff that you still need to get 
in order to ensure the safety of your vehicle. And I think that's things that you just some people just don't tell you about. Another thing that you should factor in is okay, if for example your car is four thousand a month, budget double that. So budget eight thousand on your monthly vehicle expenses. I say that to include petrol. It will generally include the price of your uh, insurance and the tracker and just anything extra just so that you know that you're covered so if you know that you can't afford sorry about that if you know that you can't afford eight thousand rand a month then maybe you should you can't afford this car but anyways that's just how i went about buying my car and things that i wish i knew so i could have maybe saved better maybe if i wanted to make a deposit save at least 10 percent of the car's value because i think that can make more of a material difference or if you're fine with just paying over a car for the next um, three to five years, I think now I think you can actually pay it over six years, then that should be the way to go. But that was everything that I encountered when it came to buying a car. So far, me and I can name my car Sanguine, because Sanguine is like bubbly and the car's also Sanguine red and I felt like it, um, what do you call it? It described my personality. So I named her Sanguine Colette Hewlett. She's my baby and I love her so much. But I think over and above that, just enjoy the vehicle only buy it if you need it because it is a big commitment don't get caught up in the hype of saying i need a car or i need a vw so that's the one that i'm gonna get make sure that you stay within your price range and you make the right decisions and obviously the most important is don't drink and drive um try not to speed because when you get the fines it's your fines and you have to pay for them and fines fines suck trust me i know i like <laughs> the drama i thought i was so scared i thought i was going to jail but it's fine as part of life. Just drive safely, guys. And all the best with your new vehicle purchase. If you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in my next video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.